welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Solano Gymnasium. You are watching the Solano College Sports Network, where the visiting Contra Costa Comets are taking on your Solano Falcons and exciting men's basketball. Joining me, Brian Nelson, here in the broadcast booth is Anthony Williams and Kareem Wallen. How you doing, guys? Hello, I'm doing fine. How are you, Brian? I'm doing great. The start of the weekend, Super Bowl weekend, and we're going to have an exciting game between Contra Costa and Solano. So first, let's find out some keys to the game for Contra Costa. Kareem, what do you think some keys for Contra Costa to have their second win of the season against Solano? Well, the first game, they all rebounded the uh, Solano man by 21, so I think that's one thing that you got to look for in tonight's game, the uh, rebounding edge to see if they can be big like they was the last game. And they held the Falcons to only 40% shooting in that first game. So if you can uh, dictate both of those paces, you have a good outcome of coming out and winning the second game. What about Solano, Anthony? What do they have to do to change that loss and come up victorious against Contra Costa? Well, like Kareem said, Solano was out-rebounded, so definitely in this game they need to rebound more and get in the paint more to raise that field goal percentage from 40% up higher, and maybe they will come out with the victory. Yeah, definitely some a struggling game uh, that Donovan Smith had against Contra Costa, only scoring nine points unlike him. He's definitely a volume shooter and a volume scorer, so if Donovan Smith can change that shooting performance from only scoring nine to scoring double digits, perhaps that's the difference in this game against Contra Costa. Yeah, he was only two for 13 from the field, so, you know, look for Donovan Smith to get off to a quick start. You know, he liked to get his game going early, but uh, Corey... Cox has been consistent for the last three uh, games. The Falcons right now have won three out of the last four and three and three in the last six. So let's see if they can keep the trend going with the wins. And that win against Los Madonos was their best team win of the season. A lot of involvement from the entire offense. So starting for Solano Day is Donovan Smith along with Corey Cox. Joining him is JT Robinson, Jesse Carey, and Kyle Osterstock. For the Contra Costa Comets is Dawson Johnson, Tajai Johnson, Justin Johnson, Lowell John Hall and Jabrail Newkirk. Johnson, Johnson, and Johnson sound like a legal firm there, B. <laughs> so let's see if they can lay down the law here against Solano and they win the tip. Donovan Smith taking the tip there. So Newkirk again in the screen from Lowell Hall. Passing it over to one of the Johnsons for three. Tajai Johnson not able to make it, but is a rebound, but travel from Justin Johnson. He yeah, looked like he got his feet mixed up. Forgot to put the ball down first. Got a little anxious there. Yes, got to put the ball on the ground first before you can move. A common occurrence here in community college basketball. We see guys get a little ahead of themselves, a little excited to get the ball and wanted to get uh, an aggressive drive to the hole. So costly turnover from Contra Costa on their very first possession. So see if Solano can capitalize. Corey Cox passing it to Donovan Smith, driving, floating, off back rim and rebounded by Lowell John Hall. Doesn't surprise me to see Diamond Smith take an early shot there. Yes, he needs to heat up real quick in order for the team to come out with the victory. Yeah, rhythm very important for a shooter like Donovan Smith. An aggressive defensive play by Smith. Not able to get the ball, though, but Solano recovers. So 14 left on the shot clock. Dawson Johnson getting a screen from Hall. Passing it over to Justin Johnson. Drives, passing it to other, another Johnson for three and is missed. But a rebound against Contra Costa on Lowell John Hall on the rebound. Yeah, a little aggressive down there on the block. Came over the back on Arthur Scott, Scott Stock, excuse me. Yeah. And uh, Solano Man able to get the possession. Nice box out over Stock, Oster Stock. Yeah, Oster Stock playing a lot better as of late. He hit four three pointers in that game against Los Bedanos on there on the defensive end, causing the uh, defensive foul oh, oh. on the loose ball foul. So Corey Cox now defended by Taja, Taji, Taji Johnson. Cox puts it up and out, rebounded by Taji Johnson. He takes it strong to the hole and he lays it up and out, rebounded by Hall and the hook shot is good. So the first points of the game go to Contra Costa. Nice offensive rebound, rebound there by Lowell Hall. He's able to get inside and make it easy conversion for two. So Solano now going into their offensive set, and we've seen this play from the last game. Ostersock and Carey basically stay still and set screens for the other three men here being Smith, Cox, and Robinson. Trying to open up some holes there. Yeah, and they need to get some baseline movement. It seems like the uh, 
Contra Costa man a little bit aggressive, so let's see if they can uh, get some back baseline movement there. Robinson missed the layup there, and the scrum for the ball comes out with Contra Costa with Ju uh, Justin Johnson over to Dawson Johnson, pump fake, and he shoots the mid-range jumper and it is good. Nice pump fake and pulled up to the right. I like that. Yeah, nice in-rhythm shot there from Dawson Johnson, the point guard, averaging 14.2 points per game, the second leading score for the Contra Costa Comets. Yeah, behind Taji uh, Johnson, we're going to have to look at those two as being key factor on the offensive end. So missed there, rebounded by Justin Johnson. Guys, I think we should look out for this Corey Cox and Taji Johnson matchup. It's going to be very exciting. I know both of them from high school, and it's going to be a great matchup. And there, Cox hit with a very nice bounce pass to Donovan Smith for the layup. Yeah, Anthony, I think that is a key matchup in tonight's game. I mean, both guys can uh, put the ball in the basket but somebody's going to have to pay extra defense to keep the guy from going off tonight so Solano now in his zone defense with JT Robinson and Donovan Smith up top yeah, Dawson this, Johnson this is smart Brian because with the 2-3 zone they are keeping the comments out, out of the paint and forcing them to shoot three pointers so let's see if that defensive strategy can help it did on that possession with a missed three point attempt and the substitution for Solano LeJean Sewell and Tim Moore, another lefty. Yeah, and let's see if the Falcon man can get an easy basket. As I alluded to earlier, the Commons are playing a little bit aggressive on defense and a man to man, so let's see if they get some baseline work. So Newkirk guarding Sewell. Gives it to Cox with the Osterstock screens. He rolls to the basket, pulls up, passes it to Tim Moore, out to Smith, and they bring it back out, settle down. With 12 seconds left on the shot clock, Cox surveys the defense. Drives to his left, pass it to Smith with six on the shot clock, drives, nice floater, off to the left though, and short, rebounded by Contra Costa. It's starting to look like another bad game for Donovan early on. Maybe he's in the back of his mind, he knows he struggled against Contra Costa, maybe doing a little bit too much to try and will his team to victory. Newkirk with a block from Osterstock, and it is tipped out of bounds by Philip Seacrease, who checked into the game. And in the game against uh, Mendocino last week, a couple, couple of days ago, you know, Cox, he didn't get off to a great start offensively, but he was doing a lot of other things, rebounding assists still. So try to do that in your game, and that way your offensive game will come to you later down the stretch. So let's see if Cox, who has the ball right now, can initiate the offense. Nice three-point attempt from Donovan Smith, wide open for three. And that's more of a shot that Smith can take within the system, within rhythm, not forcing it. Nice shot there by Smith. And a good back screen from Kyle Osterstock. They definitely thought Donovan Smith was going to cut to the basket. Stops on a dime, goes back to the three-point range. So now Pekela McKenzie in the game, passes it over to Seacrease, who drives it and not able to make that layup. Bow for the rebound. Donovan Smith saves it. Thought he saved it, but he stepped out of bounds. I like the ball movement between the Comets. They, they want the, the players from Solano to move around and get mi all mixed up with their zone, and that's what you need to do when your, uh, the other team plays a zone. Get them all mixed up, run around, and hit your open shots. If you have a lot of movement on zone defense, odds are there'll be a miscommunication from the defense, and you'll get a wide open shot. Yes, sir. So right now, for the comments, we have Daw Dawson Johnson, Taji Johnson, back to Dawson. They work the ball in the middle, and that is good from Lowell Hall. Nice dive there by Hall to get to the gut of the defense with an easy conversion for two. It's a good ball movement, and that led to an easy layup through the zone defense. So Cox now drives to his left Ooh. and is swatted away from Phillips Seacrease. Nice block. Came from the weak side and swatted that out of there. Good weak side help there, was able to identify that his man had got beat and was over there to... Pick up his slack. Nice defense there by the I, Comets. I had a little flashback with that block. <laughs> Kyle Osterstock gives it to Cox. Another good screen from Osterstock. Unable to hit the three, though, from Donovan Smith. In and out. Dawson over to Seacrease. Back to Dawson Johnson. Taji Johnson into the middle. It is off Sewell's leg. So a lot of contact in there, no calls. No call. It looked like it was a good no call by the wrestler that they got their feet kind of tangled up and both guys fell to the floor. So substitution for Contra Casa, DeAndre Russell replacing Lowell Hall. 
So right now, Pakelo McKenzie inbounds it. And you expect this game to be close tonight. I mean, both teams either get blew out or blow out their uh, opponents before tonight's game. So let's see if these teams could be more competitive than their last six. McKenzie drives with the floater off the back of the backboard and good. Yes, I like the floater. Reminds me of Tony Parker. That was a nice pull-up move from the guard. And that it is a lost, a lost arc shot in the NBA. Only a few guys put it up like, like you alluded to, Anthony, with Tony Parker. So let's see if Solano can respond. Tim Moore off the backboard for and one. Nice move there by Moore. Was able to get to the right side elbow and kiss it off the window for two with opportunity for three. So let's see if the freshman can connect on the free throw. That'll tie this game up at eight. And with a little bit over six minutes pass in this game, you want to see what team is going to make uh, the opportunity to get separation. You know, defense is uh, back and forth, so it's eight to seven now. Eight to eight. So let's see, Taj, Taji Johnson. Passes it around. Pekela McKenzie for three. No good. Rebound. Oh. Stolen away by Donovan Smith. Good. Rebound there. Passes out to Sewell. Andrew Brinson checking into the game. Gets it over to Tim Moore. He pump fakes. Surrounded by Contra Costa, and that causes a travel. Too many steps. Yeah, picked, picked, up, up, that, pivot foot. picked up that pivot foot. And got a little in indecisive there. Didn't know if the pass or shoot. So good swarming defense from the Comets. And... We really see that box score jumping out live in this game. They are very good yeah. on the defensive rebounding. And you can see why they was able to out-rebound the Falcons in the previous game by 20. That is the one thing on this roster that Solano really does not have. They don't have too much size and too much depth in the four positions. So it's plays like that from Donovan Smith with the steal that are going to be very important. Sewell drives, lays it up, and in. Try to draw the charge from McKenzie, but no it, call. It was definitely questionable, Brian. Definitely questionable. He looked like he was there in plenty of time, but refs decide not to call it. So the comments call a timeout after Solano takes its first lead of the game, I believe, at 10 to 8 with 13.05 left in this first half. And guys, what do you see so far from both sides? Well, for the comments, I see a lot of aggression going to the hole. They're still rebounding and out rebounding the Falcons by three right now early in this game and you know uh, what they have to do is continue to get to the bucket but also uh, move the ball around and try to get some inside shots as alluding to the three. I see a, a lot of great ball movement by the comments and I see that the Falcons are really trying to get more into the paint. Yeah let's see how Solano's bench unit is going to do right now because Don Smith the only starter out there with LeJean Sewell, Andrew Brinston, Andre Usher, and Tim Moore for the Comets. Pekela McKenzie, Tommy Schneckenberger. Now into the post, out to Schneckenberger. Looks, passes it into, dangerous passes. Schneckenberger ends up with the ball, passes it out. 30, 30 seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, I think they reset it. The possession did go to the Falcon man. Okay. It was restored by the Comets. Yes, yeah, that was too many passes by the <laughs> Comets that time. So a little too unselfish there from Contra Costa. And DeAndre Russell with the strong move, and it is a block on Tim Moore, and Tim Moore cannot believe it. Yeah, I think he got caught just inside of that uh, small U right up under the basket. It did seem like uh, DeAndre Russell was a little bit out of control, but he did get the call as far as the ref called it a block. Yeah, very aggressive, almost uncontrolled offensive move there from Russell. See the lefty. Misses the first rebound, and Tim Moore wants to make a statement there with the rebound mm -hmm. that he's not happy with that foul call on him. As they say, the ball don't lie. Yep. Yes, sir, Rasheed Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> See if ball still don't lie. So <laughs> no free throws there from Russell. Donovan Smith drives to his right, foul by number two, Byron Buckley. That was the a drive. great trap by the Comets. I like that. So. Really good defense we're seeing from the Contra Costa side. Yeah, definitely great defense. I know Smith when he get his offensive game going, but he already has three early steals in this game. He's rebounding. Let your game come to you. Play within the system. Yes, I agree with you, Kareem. I agree. Just let it come to you. 
So Sewell trying to see what the Contra Costa defense can give them over to Princeton. Princeton goes away from the Usher screen, gets it out to Usher. Usher cross court pass, dangerous to Sewell, but Sewell saves it and Very dangerous. turns it over. Yeah, ill-advised pass there. You're throwing the ball away from the basket at a bad angle, and he couldn't gather the ball. Nice defensive pressure there by the Comets. Yeah, I think the angle of that pass was very important because the way Sewell caught it, he was right by the out-of-bounds line and the half-court line, and his defender was in the other only place he could be. So yes, he Trapped didn't have him. much of a choice that time. Yeah. Kayla McKenzie drives, passes to Schneckenberger for three, off the front of the rim. Fast break opportunity, Tim Moore off to the races, lays it up and out, but draws the foul. Yeah, that was a nice move there by Moore. Uh, you would like to see him able to finish with the right hand, maybe uh, be able to kiss it off the glass and get an additional bucket with the foul, but let's see if he can earn two easies from the strike. And Tim Moore is a 72.7% free throw shooter on the year, so one of the better free throw shooters at the line for Solano, the lefty freshman. You know, he has a slim build. He plays with his left hand, his primary strong hand. So filling the lanes can be easy for him. They don't have to take a lot of steps to get to the bucket. So, you know, in transition, look for Timothy Moore to fill the lanes consistently tonight. And a hockey-style substitution from Contra Costa, substituting about four guys at once. They have the depth. They have 12 people here at yeah. the Solano Gymnasium. Yes, I can see. It's, it looks like they have extra chairs on yeah. their bench. <laughs> So rebound there by Lowell Hall. Over to Dawson Johnson. Looks like most of the starters are back into this game. And for all the up and down we've been seeing in the first nine minutes of this game, the common men only have eight points. So, you know, good defense there by the Solano men, not allowing them second chance shots. Johnson, Dawson passes it inside of Lowell Hall. Cannot make that layup. Good defense from Donovan Smith. Yeah, he changed his shot, but, you know, those are gimmies. You got to make those if you want to stay in the game like this. So Smith now trying to set the offense over to Sewell. So back to Smith. Guarded by Justin Johnson. They swarm him. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Not much happening for the Sloan offense on this possession. So Donovan Smith drives right. Dribbles back, passes it to Tim Moore. Three seconds left on the shot clock. Just shoots it up and misses. Yeah, it was no movement by the Falcon man. They just stand around and stagnant. They got to get more movement, as I talked about before. Try to get some movement on the baseline. So, yes. yes, they need more consistent ball movement, Kareem. And Dawson Johnson with the pull-up jumper from the free throw line is fouled by Brinston. Nice pump fake there. Was able to get him a, a good shot, and he was fouled by Brinston, who had to recover after the, he bit for the pump fake. So Dawson Johnson at the line, the sophomore guard, 71% free throw shooter. And he misses, so they're leaving points at the line there from Contra Costa, and Solano's lucky. They have been struggling on all the offensive end, but their defense has kept them in this game, and they have an 11-8 lead. Yeah, the last trip down for the Commons, they missed both free throws. Now they make one out of the last four. So you got to make those easy free throws because that could be the difference in a close game. So yes, just sir. under 10 and a half left in this first half. Tim Moore drives to his left and pulls it back out. Into the cutting, Brinston. Brinston brings it back out to Sewell, who drives to his left and puts it up and off the backboard strong. Rebounded by Trenton Smith. Stolen away from Donovan Smith, a floater. Just in and out, and something about Contra Costa, Donovan Smith just can't hit a bucket. Just can't make a bucket, man, but I, I like his aggression on defense. There, Taj, nice, Taji Johnson. With a nice, nice drive there by Johnson. Nice left-handed layup there. Yes, I see a lot of that growing up. <laughs> yeah, tell yeah. us about Taji Johnson. What kind of player is he? Well, Taji Johnson, he is an all-around player. As you can see, he's really aggressive on defense. He can guard any position from the – a point guard to the power four. He's a lefty. He can pull up from anywhere. And he's driving to his right, and he draws the foul from Andrew Brinson, who is going to – how's his free throw game? Is he <laughs> so he's well, about to shoot two. It's been a while since I've seen him shoot a free throw, but I'm guessing he, he still has it. 72% on the year, so not too bad. Surprising. He's only 16% three-point shooter. Yeah, probably don't take a lot of threes and out the game, but he's a nice slasher. 
He has good size. I mean, he's a predominantly left-handed guy, but look like he can finish with either hand. Yeah. So look for him to be, you know, the uh, trendsetter for the comments tonight. So now Solano with a hockey-style substitution. Now I got – okay, there he is. They had four guys on the court. And Corey Cox checks back into the game along with Orson Stock. So let's see if they can – these two can get the guys going now. So Cox with the rebound on the free throw miss. And – that's the story so far for Contra Costa side of the offense, leaving four points on the free throw line. Corey Cox out to Andrew Brinson. Brinson to Snell, Joe Sean Snell now in the game with Jesse Carey, Corey Cox, and Kyle Osterstock. Cox dribbles the ball, pass Hall, or Johnson. Brinson pulls up for three, and it is off rim. Taji Johnson with the rebound, pushing the ball up the court. Passes it back to Dawson Johnson, pulls up from the free throw line. And it's off rim, but rebound by Trenton Smith. Rebounded by Corey Cox. Trenton Smith really didn't have an angle on that shot. Yeah. No, not no, at all. No angle at all. It's kind of just forced it up. So Solano benefiting from that rush shot from Smith. Corey Cox now with the ball. And let's see if we get a little two-man game here with him at Orson Stock. Good close out there by Justin Johnson on that three-point attempt. Corey's first shot of the night. Let's see if he can get it going. There is Newkirk, not able to make it. Taji Johnson drawing the foul, though, on the second and third opportunity. You can see the very aggressive play that I was talking about from Taji Johnson. He's like that all the time. He's a tremendous athlete, and he has all the energy in the world. Yeah, very active down there on the block. He was able to get two offensive rebounds and then get himself to the line for two free, free throws. So let's see if he can converge these free throws because they've been uh, missing them. And he does make the first, and so Andrew Brinson going to take a seat on the bench after picking up, I believe, from the PA announcer with his third personal foul. So backup guard Brinson in some foul trouble. So JT Robinson checking into the game. JT Robinson, another guy that can really jumpstart this offense along with Corey Cox. Yeah, definitely get JT Robinson a couple of touches, see if they can get him going for the Falcon man. Taji Johnson hits both free throws, and now there is a, I thought it was a three-point lead, two-point lead. From Contra Costa. Well, I believe that first free throw was waved off for the, by the referee, a lane oh, so violation. Lane violation from yeah. Contra Costa, costing them yet another point. So, free throws. There's aggression working against Taji Johnson, fouling Corey Cox, but they're not in the bonus, so they're just going to take the ball out of bounds. Yeah, not a lot of fouls going on right now. Just the fifth for the common man, but. You know, as Anthony alluded to earlier about Taji Johnson, he's very active out there on the perimeter. Seems like he's trying to be able to start his own fast break because once he gets the ball in his hands, he can go coast to coast. So Buckley and Hall in for the comments now. On defense, JT Robinson drives. Drills back out, passes to Cox. He wants the screen from Carey, goes away from it, gets the screen from Carey. It's the Comet men switch. I don't see Solano trying to get to the paint at all tonight. It seems like they're just passing it around at the perimeter. So Corey Cox trying to get into the paint and just throws one off the rim. Short. So a rebound. Newkirk. Jabrell Newkirk drives to his right. Pass it back out to Dawson Johnson. So Newkirk with Joe Sean Snell guarding him. Passing it out to Dawson Johnson. Gets the rebound from Hall. Not the rebound, the screen from Hall. Cox with the rebound. Nice rebound there by Cox. You know, and the Falcon man, they need to get some more movement down on the block and the baseline. They're doing a lot of rotating there on the top, but that's not getting no movement towards the bucket. You're trying to get high percentage shots in this game. Possessions are few and far between. And right now, you see a lot of standing around. Jesse Carey and Ostershock just standing at the corner three. JT Robinson had a pretty good look. Doesn't want to take it, though. Corey Cox in the post, double team, kicks it out to Carey. Five on the shot clock. Snell shoots up for three, and it is long off the backboard. Rebound going to Lowell Hall, and the comments are off and running. Dawson Johnson to his left, goes all the way too high off the backboard and off the shot clock. A little out of control there from Dawson Johnson. Yeah, a little out of control was trying to get some going to the basket. But you like to see that, you know, with the Falcon men, as I talked about earlier, they stand on the perimeter, and you live by the three, you die by the three. I think they only made two so far tonight, so they're going to have to try to get the ball inside. So Dawson Smith dribbles it off his foot. Good diving Ooh, play nice from hustle. Justin Johnson. So the fast break 
Gets a layup from Jabril Newkirk. And you like to see that. You give your body up, get a possession for your team, and get an easy bucket to go up four here with a little bit over six minutes to go. Yes, that's the easiest way to make a coach happy right there by diving on the ground and giving your body up. It's a good play from the comment man. JT Robinson better watch out. And he gets his pick pocketed by Justin Johnson. He goes to the other side of the rim for the left-handed layup. Nice reverse layup there by Johnson. And, you know, the Comets, they're very athletic on the perimeter. They're, you know, anticipating the passes, and they're stepping in the passing lane. I believe that's their fourth steal of the first half. And so the Comets right now on a 9-1 run. Solano had the lead briefly at 10-8 with just over 10-30 in the game. So in the last four, minute, four and a half minutes, yes, the Comets got on a nice offensive run. You can see the momentum shifting to the Comets right now. Solano need, definitely needs to pick their game up right now so the Comets won't um, blow them out and get away with this game. I think it's really classic basketball you see from the Contra Costa side. Your defense leads to offense. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. And, you know, they're leading this game right now. Fast break points, 8-2. to two. So you have to understand that the comments, they're going to be, you know, cherry picking and, you know, taking chances. And that's when you can, you know, exploit them with the backdoor cuts, you know, get some movement on the baseline. I haven't seen that for the Falcon men as of late. So let's see if they can make some adjustments, see what they talked about in this timeout to come out down six, try to get back in this game before the half is over. And I think what Coach Nickel should tell us, guys, is you're only down six. They have a lot of points left on the free throw line. You're still in this game. There's still plenty of time in this game to get an offensive rhythm going. Yeah. So take this last six minutes, cut the lead, try and take the lead, or at least cut it down to less than it is. Yeah. <laughs> so Donovan Smith drives. A possession or two, exactly. Yeah. So Donovan Smith now brings the ball out, being guarded by Justin Johnson. Over to Corey Cox. Gets the screen from Osterstock to his right. Back screen from Smith. But Cox wasn't looking. Yeah. So missed opportunity there. Corey Cox with 15 on the shot clock. Pulls up for three. And it is short off the rim and rebounded by Buckley. Buckley out to Seacrease. Now Justin Johnson gets it back to number five, Jabril Newkirk. You would have liked to see the Falcon man coming out that timeout to run a set play to get an easy bucket, but it seemed like a little bit of the same type of offense. One man dribbling, everybody else standing around. So Buckley with the pull-up jumper. Looks like the Comets have a ton of lefties there. And uh, Donovan Smith drives, pass it to Jesse Carey, back out to Osterstock. Smith for three. In and out. In and out. So Donovan yeah. Smith just centimeters off his game tonight. Yeah. Yes, they are very cold right now. They need to heat up immediately or this game will be gone. So they carry the ball there from Contra Costa. And on that last possession, Smith, he had a fast break going. He was trying to get it to his com comrade, Tommy, excuse me, uh, Jameson Robinson, but he pulled back and took a three-pointer that was ill-advised, I think. So just under five minutes left in this game. Solano still down 11 to 17. Donovan Smith goes to his right, Jesse Carey. Sewell to his left, back up top to JT Robinson. Running this little wheel play. Maybe a figure eight type of play, I would call it. Mm -hmm. They just run to the left, pass it up top. And a good back cut finally from Osterstock, but not able to make the layup. But that's what I like to see. A man dive into the bu bucket. A nice pass there by Smith. Just wasn't able to convert. So Taji Johnson, though, on the other end, draws a foul. And those buckets are there for the Falcons for the taking. You know, the common man, they're over-aggressive on defense. They're playing the passing lane. If you get a couple guys moving to the buckets, you'll be amazed how many easy shots, attempts you can get on glass. And I think that motion just kind of lulls the defense into just following the guy coming off the screen. They probably aren't... Uh, keeping up with the man setting the screen. Definitely. Yes. And like, and adding on to what Kareem was saying, if you move around and the comments, they like to anticipate a lot of a lot of passes. And if you get them one time and cut to the hoop, then you will end up with the easy buckets. So Taji Johnson hits two free throws. So the lead is now at eight. Small so substitution with Usher coming in for carry. And now Tim Moore also in this game. So JT Robinson, Donovan Smith. Good play from Seacrease on the Comets, but a bad pass or an unfortunate pass off a of foot. 
And the common defense picking up full court was able to get another possession, another steal, their sixth steal of this half. So, you know, the Solano men have to be aware of that. Don't get caught up. Have somebody flash middle, and you can break that press. Yes, that's the easiest way to break a press is setting screens and flashing to the middle, and you will see wide open passes. I think the length of the Contra Costa bothers Solano a lot just because they're a lot bigger physically. Yeah. So Dawson Johnson over to Buckley. Pulls up for a long two. Out. Rebounded by Johnson at the free throw line. Russell. And that is good. So DeAndre Russell hits his first shot from the field. Nice free throw line jumping there. Here's so, another turnover. So aggressive defense again from Contra Costa. Leads to another steal. Bounce pass to Taji Johnson. And the lead is now 12 with 345 left in this game. Oh, it's looking ugly right now. When I, I know them hand claps. Taji Johnson, he's feeling the emotion <laughs> right now. Yeah. He might heat up. I'm just warning you guys. Yeah. And some lackadaisical passes out there by the Solano man. You have to be aware of the situation. You know that the guys on the comments have been picking up full court for the last three or four possessions. As we said earlier, have somebody flash middle, set a back screen, and get your easy layup going down the middle. You can't get caught in a, your own backcourt without getting the ball past the half court line. Yeah, just reading some nonverbal signs from the Solano side of things, just a lot of frustration. How, how as a player do you think you can curb that frustration and be keep your head in the game? Well, you have to uh, motivate your teammates, first of all. You can't let your teammates ever get down about themselves. You have to motivate them 24-7. You know, even off the court, just motivate them. And as far as on the court, just, just slow it down, you know, uh, make the easy passes, set screens for each other, play team ball. Yeah, and you know, you, you don't want to start pointing fingers or anything. You want to kind of stay on the same page. You know, trusting your, your teammates and do your job, as Belichick said. Everybody do their <laughs> job and everything should be fine. And let's see if the Patriots can do their job against uh, <laughs> Seattle there in Arizona. Super yeah. Bowl Sunday coming up. Yeah, I was amazed to hear in an interview about Belichick where they, he said since their last time they played, he watched every game of Seattle's since that last game in 2012. Yes. A lot of wins there for Seattle in that span of time. Yes, sir. Sewell now trying to break the press. Dawson Johnson gets called for the foul. And that's another ill-advised pass. You're throwing the ball cross court. You're giving the defender time to, to jump in the passing lane. And you had Smith right there in the middle. Make the easier pass. So now Tim Moore being pressured, gets it over to Snell, Snell to Sewell. So they break the press finally, see if they can get something rolling on offense. Well, Brian, even though they broke the press, number 30 should have, should have cut to the hole. Number 30, Lejean Sewell, he should have cut to the hole and got the easy layup. It was there for him. So Buckley with a good cut pass to Taji Johnson, who hits it. They hit Taji Johnson is starting to heat up. I mean, you know he's a dominant left-hand player, and they seem to keep forcing him to a strong hand. You would think that you would force him to his weaker hand, but, you know, they're going to have to do something to keep this guy in check. Other, he's going to go off. He's hit the last three, four buckets. And he's a guy in the last game that was really the difference maker for the Contra Costa Comets. An offensive rebound tied up and it is going to be Solano ball. So good play from Phillip Seacrest, though, to get yeah. the possession arrow back in their favor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that last game he spoke about, Taji Johnson had 25 big points with 10 rebounds. So, you know, 9-11 from the field, 7-11 from the free throw line. You know, he made his presence felt in the prior game. And, guys, we should pay attention because so far, I think Taji Johnson has guarded four different people <laughs> in three different positions. So, yeah. you know, you can see his versatile defensive side coming out as he's guarded the point guard, the small forward and power forward. And he's, he's just walking down the court, holding his left hand out like he's Shaq, just feeling it. So ton of confidence from Taji Johnson. But a missed three on the other side from Solano was Sewell coming up short on the wide open three. Not going to get a better look than that. Yeah, and at one time this game was 11 to 8. Excuse me, 12 to 11 of uh, the Commons. They didn't run off 13 in a row. So let's see if the Falcon man can get a stop here and get a high percentage shot going to the other end. Yeah, overall a 17 to 1 run. Solano's lone lead was 10 to 8 with 10.30 left in this game. Well, we talked about that earlier. What team would separate themselves from the other team? I mean, you know, the common man was out there putting up full court presses and was able to get some key turnovers to extend their lead. 
Donald Smith trying to play some aggressive defense, tr trying to get their defense to lead to offense. So Smith hounding Justin Johnson, but a good back cut, but stolen away from Sewell. And you see a little bit of the Falcons doing what the Commons was doing, putting a little pressure out there, collapsing on the man with the ball and was able to get a turnover of their own. Smith for three, short. Rebound, Andre Usher, but he's still cold right now, Brian. He, he, he's trying to heat up real bad, but yeah. he's just cold right now. I think he should facilitate more right now. Yeah, uh, Tritton <coughs> over the back there for the common man. Yeah, Trenton Smith. So Snell kicks it out to Sewell, 26 on the shot clock. And they're just trying to communicate, trying to get something going on offense. Smith drives to his left, kicks it back out to Snell for three. It is off, rebounded though by Sewell, puts it back up, short. Battle for the ball ends up in the hands of Trenton Smith. Out to Dawson Johnson, up to Justin Johnson. Drives to his left, and a foul is called on Donovan Smith. Yeah, it looked like Johnson just lost his foot in there, but they gave Smith the foul with maybe the hip check. Yeah, I thought that was a little bit more of the court monster getting him than uh, <laughs> Donovan Smith. Yes, but Solano, like Kareem was saying, if you live by the three, you die by the three. Mm -hmm. And right now, they are dying right now. Well, we still got halftime for them to get a little CPR, resuscitate that offense. But uh, <laughs> yeah. we still got 145 left in this first half. Try and cut this lead down to 10. Let make it a little bit more manageable. That seems like a realistic goal for Donovan Smith. And the offense driving to his left. Too much dribbling going on right now. And they Justin Johnson's length really bothering Smith. So Sewell drives, gets a foul called on Pakela McKenzie. And the Falcon men, they have no players running the baseline. I mean, I haven't seen that all night. Yeah. They keep all the players on the perimeter, uh, free, free throw line extended. If yeah. you get some action on that baseline, you're going to get some easy conversions. They need to have more spacing and more uh players going up and down the baseline from uh, left right to left box. But Sewell hits the first free throw on a one and one so he gets another free throw. And this isn't a bad strategy for Solano. Try and whittle this lead down for the free throw line. Yeah. No time off the clock. Get some points. Yes and adding on to what Kareem was saying mm -hmm. if you don't get any ball movement if you if you don't have players moving around then the other team will not get tired. They will keep being active and you can see like they the comments don't look like they're slowing down at all. They, they still look very active and I think at the moment. Something that compounds that is the fact that they are a deep roster. We've seen 12 different players play in this game. Yeah, they go 12 deep, and they have all athletes coming off that bench, whether it's from the forward, the point guard, or even the center position. So the Falcon men, they're going to have to make some adjustments. But taking two timeouts and not being able to uh, set up a play to get you an easy bucket, you know, that's telling right now. They do have made some adjustments on defense mm -hmm. where they're trapping more, trying to take a page out of the Commons defense. But, you know, try to get them traps to get you easy shots, easy turnovers, and get yourself back in this game with a minute 20 left and a half. So Dawson Johnson, the point guard for the Commons at the line, hits two of two free throws. So lead back up to 14 with a minute 20 left in the game. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Smith drives past number 10. Tajay Brown, don't call me Tajay Brown. Stolen away by Dawson Johnson, lays it up and in. Good move from Dawson Johnson. So Johnson and Johnson, really the two guys. The Johnson and Johnson connection, but that's another ill-advised pass by the Falcon men. I mean, you know they're shooting the passing lanes and you playing right into their hands. But good defense from the Contra Cross side of things. So Sewell over to Smith finally gets a good look again. Andre Usher didn't look to go back up, looks to pass it to a teammate, throws it out to the open court. Lucky that he gets Sewell. As a big man, you're supposed to go back up with those. You you shouldn't care about getting blocked. It seems like they they care about getting blocked more than, you know, even trying to get up a basket. You know, everybody gets blocked. Yeah. You know. Even Michael Jordan got blocked. <laughs> and an offensive foul called on LeJean Sewell. And we finally get an offensive foul call when I think the defender was still moving. Yeah. So, you know, we had a couple earlier plays where it could have been called charges, they called blocks. This one I think they missed. Little lateral movement, wasn't stationary, and, uh, but he did get the call. So, you know, the common man, they're, they're trying to beat him to the, to the spot. You know, they're being very active. 
And Solano definitely going to have to make adjustments going into the half down 16 now. So now Contra Costa trying to add to that 16-point lead, though. 20 seconds left and counting. Probably the last possession for Contra Costa. Pekela McKenzie being guarded by Donovan Smith. Tim Moore tips it away, but the Comets still have possession. Dawson Johnson surveys with five seconds left. Drives to his left. Scoops. No score, though. No basket. Foul on the floor, but that will be their 10th team foul, I believe. So he'll get two because it's in the double bonus. Double bonus, yeah. And, you know, it seemed that he never put the ball down, so you would think it would have been a continuation. You know, after the foul was called, he proceeded to make his move to the basket. But they call it on the floor. Nevertheless, two more points to put his team up 18. And Dawson Johnson, really the story with Taji, Taji Johnson. Hits the first. So now 30 to 13 with four seconds left. In a minute here, we're going to have to start going by the initials, TJ and JJ and yeah. <laughs> DJ. DJ, TJ, and JJ, okay. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting confused, too. That will definitely help me. Huey, Dewey, and Louie, <laughs> huh? <laughs> I mean, there's two guys on this team, T-A-J-A-I. One's Taji, one's Tajay. Yeah. And uh, that's confusing the heck out of me. <laughs> so three seconds left. Thomas Smith with a full court shot, and it is just short. So at the half, it will be the Contra Costa Comets, 31, Solano Falcons, 13. Fellas, really Solano struggling in this first half. But Contra Costa, really, their defense is leading to most of their struggles. Yeah, yeah. the defense set the tone for the common man. They was able to get out there and get some easy buckets because of turnovers, I believe, in the last uh, six to seven possessions. They got three or four turnovers out of those. So they pushed the lead to 18 now. And look, looking back on the first game, the Solano man, they had 41 at the end of the first half. They have 13 tonight. So great defense by the comments, man. So, Anthony, from the Solano side of things, what is Coach Nagel going to say to his guys at halftime? They definitely need to get some more ball movement. Players need to move around, you know, set the screens for each other, off ball screens, you know. Get just get, get the wide open shot. Stop taking threes so much, and you will see if they get in the paint more, then their field goal percentage will go up. So we'll see if Solano can break this stifling defense from the Contra Costa comments after we come back from halftime after a few short messages. Well, hi everybody. Greg Poff here in the Solano College Sports Network studios to tell you about a great opportunity here at Solano Community College where we are the only community college in the nation to have our own sports network program. So if you're interested in a career in sports broadcasting, Solano Community College is the place for you. Lots of opportunities to develop your skills in sports broadcasting, as you can see, either as a host for one of our sports shows or covering many of the Solano sports events that we cover here at the college. You can learn to do all the behind the scenes work in our sports network studio that has been completely revamped. Learn to host your own sports network studio, show, or be out there live covering high school football. We even cover some high school sports as well. Learn how to improve your interview skills, get behind the camera, learn how to speak on the mic, and also learn all that it takes to be able to operate in a studio using the green screen. So lots of opportunities here at the college for you in our Solano College Sports Network studio. So if you're interested in taking our sports broadcasting class, you can join us here at the college every Wednesday from 1 to 4 in the Solano Sports Network studios. That's in room 121. And if you'd like more information about our sports broadcasting program, hit me up by sending me an email to gpaw at solano.edu or give me a call here at the college at 707-864-4537. We'd love to see you here in the spring semester. Be a part of our Solano College Sports Network studios. We're here at Solano Community College. It's more than just sports. It's an education. Hi, I'm Remington Green, and this is my broadcasting partner, Kayla Givens. Today we're going to talk about one of the most hands-on classes you'll ever consider taking. We're talking about sports, sports broadcasting. broadcasting. After everything said and done, this class has taught me how to be involved, and it's given me experience in the field of sports broadcasting. It's taught me how to work behind a microphone, it's taught me how to work a camera, and it's ultimately taught me how to be a people person and talk to coaches and teachers and players. It's given me involvement because this is a two-year institution and kids come and go and there's 
kind of a hard way to be involved in such a community that's always fluctuating. It's giving me the opportunity, like I mentioned, to talk to coaches about their players and their team and what do they look for in the future, and to teachers about what their plans are for you know, their classes that they have. And ultimately, this class has given me an experience that I would never take back. Definitely. I'll definitely have to fully agree with Remington on that. This class has benefited me in many ways. I came into the class. It's my first semester here at Solano. I'm a comm major. I had no clue what I would be doing in the class. I was nervous. Oh, no, I have no experience being behind the camera. This class bought me full experience. Poff is a great professor. He works with each student hands-on. You learn so much, so much about doing interviews, working with others in group settings, as well as being there for sports events at the school such as you know basketball games soccer games you're fully working hands-on in the field and it's a great class to be a part of at the end of the day this class really really truly shows you what it means to be a sports broadcaster or a cameraman or an electrician guy who's just trying to help us out um, and this is an experience and it's not just a class where you've got textbooks and lectures but it's something that really gets you involved and really sets you up for something. If this is the future and the major that you want to have, this definitely sets you on the right path. Definitely. If you're tired of, you know, day-to-day -day lectures and classes, taking notes, and you want something more hands-on, I definitely recommend that you register for Com 75 Sports Broadcasting in Spring 2015. Hi, I'm Neil Glines, the Dean of the School of Liberal Arts, and I want to thank you for watching Solano College Sports Network. And we are back, ready for the second half of this game. See if Solano can put some sort of offensive firepower together during halftime to counteract this fierce Contra Costa defense. But Contra Costa is going to get the ball first with Jabrell Newkirk handling the ball. Corey Cox guarding him. And let's see if Solano may come out with a sense of urgency being down 18 early in the second half. Let's see if they can get a couple possessions to get them going. Well, James Johnson there with the easy layup. So, so far, that... Answer the question is no. <laughs> but uh, Solano with LeJean Sewell now starting for the second half in place of JT Robinson. So trying to interject some life. Yeah. Sewell's a type of player that gets some free throws. Yeah, if they need some scoring ASAP, once they get the scoring and get the confidence, as you can see, Corey pull up for the three, then they will definitely heat up and get the chemistry going again. Contra Costa so aggressive. Hall and Johnson nearly bumped heads with again that rebound, so James Johnson pulls up short. LeJean Sewell with the rebound. So Sewell to Donovan Smith. Drives to his right. Good layup up and in. So Donovan Smith with his easiest shot of the night. There nice. You go, Donovan. Yeah, nice shot there by Smith. Was able to get into the teeth of the defense, and that should get him going. You know, once you see the ball going in the hoop, Hopefully that'll get him going for the remainder of this game. Newkirk with the drive and it's short, but he gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. So good second effort from Jabrail Newkirk. Yeah, now you want to put a body out there. Don't allow the guy that, that shot the ball to get his own rebound. <laughs> so Corey Cox out to Kyle Ostersock in the corner. To Sewell swings the ball around to Donovan Smith. Smith gets a screen from Corey Cox out to Sewell from the three-point line. Sewell drives, spins up, and he is fouled. So that's what Sewell does. He is pretty aggressive on the offensive end and tends to draw a lot of fouls. Yeah, and you know, uh, it's good to see the Solano man going to the hole, not thinking that they have to get threes to get caught up in this game. You know, you want to get easy buckets and chip away at this deficit. Yes, that was a beautiful spin move, by the way, Sewell. I like that. <laughs> so Sewell able to hit the first free throw. So... They cut the lead to under 20. And so Andre Usher and Tim Moore in for Osterstock and Carey. Yeah, early substitution, just a minute and a half into this game. So, you know, shake up the lineup a little bit, see if you can get some guys coming off the bench and have a little more energy than the starters. I think those substitutions are going to improve the rebounding as well. Yeah. On the defensive and offensive end, trying to block out some of those cops across the comments. So Newkirk with the drive. Throws it up at the basket, strong off the back of the rim, but rebounded, thrown into Corey Cox, so a fast break, two on, three on two, Sewell up and in for the and one, so Sewell making an impact in yes. the second half. Yes, that was a good call, ref. He was not there, and, and he was under the basket anyways. Nice, nice um, pass by Corey to Sewell, and 
See, easy bucket. Fast yeah. break points. And Sue was able to, you know, control his body, not actually run over the guy, but he did get the contact underneath the bucket and has an opportunity for a three-point play. So now Contra Costa countering with some subs of their own, taking out Justin Johnson and Lowell Hall and putting in DeAndre Russell and Philip Seacrease. So the lineup is Johnson and Johnson with Dawson and Taj Taji, both having great first halves for the Comets. As Sewell hits his second free throw, or the free throw after the bucket. So Sewell, five quick points out of the second half yeah. for the bench player. And now Sloan switches to his zone. So Dawson Johnson in to Russell, out to Newkirk, out to Dawson Johnson, pulls up. And it is good, so Dawson Johnson with the pull-up jumper. Yeah, nice elbow jumper there from uh, 15. Pump fake, bought him some extra room. So aggressive move by Donovan Smith, trying to drop it in there to Usher, but there's a defender right in his path. But he got his pocket pick from Donovan Smith, and he lays it up and off the backboard. Corey Cox blocked. So good second efforts from the Costa Costa comments after that turnover from Smith. Yeah, they never given up on a play, got back, and it made it tough for him to convert on an easy layup. That was a good play by Jabril Newkirk blocking that Corey Cox putback. Nice pump fake. Nice pump fake from Sewell, but cannot get that bucket. And he travels on the rebound. Yeah, and Sewell was able to get his offensive rebound, but wasn't able to get the ball to go in the basket. Rushed it a little bit, but they was able to get bailed out by travel from the Comets. And the Comets not looking very sharp in this second half, so Miguel Johnson calls a timeout. And Miguel Johnson apparently... We didn't know this, but uh, he had some served some time here on Solano staff. Yeah. Coached here for two years, uh, probably as an assistant, and moved over to Contra Costa for the last six years. So, Miguel Johnson. Yeah, he was a, a good player in his own right. I mean, you know, he play, He was a captain of the team for two years, scored over 1,000 points. Uh, I believe he was a point guard. So, you know, uh, the guy has is well-traveled and coming back full circle to the Solano Gymnasium to try to sweep the Falcon men this year. 14-15 campaign. And so he just calls a 30-second timeout, just give his guys a little reminder of you're up 17, trying yeah. to get them collected on defense. But Solano, if they keep getting momentum, they can slowly chip away at this lead. Yeah, we talked about that last game. Solano was up big, and we thought they came out a little bit flat and complacent. And uh, we're seeing that from the common man in this half. So let's see if Solano can capitalize on that complacency from the Contra Costa Comets, a lot of Cs. Uh, Taji Johnson with the steal though. Let's see if Taji can heat back up. He tosses out to his other Johnson brother, but he cannot hit that three. Sewell with the rebound, but Taji Johnson knocks it out of bounds. So Dawson Johnson not able to hit that three. And Taji has a knack for the ball. He reminds me of Smith on the opposite end for the Falcon man. I mean, he has three or four steals tonight. You know, he just has a neck for that ball. Great hands by both players. Yeah, I think he's a perfect combination of Donovan Smith and Tim Moore. If you put those two together, just the athleticism with yeah. the size and the lefty. Tim Moore drives to his left. Yeah. Passes to Cox. I agree, Brian. So Tim Moore sizing up the defender. Says pass back out. Donovan Smith drives to his left behind oh. the back. Dangerous dribbling. Corey Cox with eight seconds left. Going to have to create something on his own. He dribbles, Taji swarming defending, pull up. pull up three, and it is off the back rim. So good defense from Contra Costa. Yeah, great defense by the Commons. They was able to keep the Falcon man on the perimeter and made a tough shot with the shot clock winding down. So Newkirk handling the ball, puts, passes over to Seacrease. Philip Seacrease guarded by Tim Moore. Over in the corner, pass back out to Dawson Johnson. Dawson Johnson gets the screen from Russell. Puts it in the corner. Taji Johnson open for three. Pump fake drives. Passes it out. They don't like that three-point shot, apparently. And he pulls up and no good. So two wide open corner threes not taken from Contra Costa. Yeah, nice rebound there by Smith. And you know, he, he's an undersized guard, but he rebounds tremendously. So let's see if uh, this ball movement get the Falcons going. Yeah, if I tell you a point guard has three 30-10 games as he shoots a three and is good, so five points. He's in double figures, first for Solano. Yeah. yeah. If I tell you a guard has 30, three 30 and 10 games, you would assume that they have 10 assists, right? Yeah. yeah. Not Donovan Smith. 10 rebound games, so three of them on the year. Yeah. He likes to get big on the boards. 
That's what you need from a point guard. Yeah. Kind of like Russell Westbrook. Yeah, the explosiveness in on the rebounding end. It's a good comparison. So let's see if Contra Costa with Taji Johnson with the sweeping hook and not able to get it. Tim Moore with a strong rebound off to the races. Corey Cox just off his fingertips. Yeah, I think he rushed that pass. A bounce pass maybe in traffic probably would have found more with an easy bucket, but, you know, kind of pumped up there. Just calm down. Play within yourself and chip away at the lead with a little bit under 15 minutes to go in the second half. So Cox going to get a breather as Andrew Brinson checks in for him. So they're going to go for, to a zone look with Smith and Brinson up top with Tim Moore, LeJean Sewell, and Andre Usher man in the middle. And I like to see this by the Falcons defense. You know, play a little 2-3 zone, trap the ball, see if you can get some turnovers to convert to easy layups. So C crease to a cutting Johnson, and Johnson gets an easy layup up and in and good. Nice move by Johnson there. Flash middle was able to finish with his strong hand off the glass for easy two points. Yeah, you'll see a lot of that from Taji Johnson. He likes to slash the hole and get easy buckets. He's not much of a three-point shooter, um, as you can see. He has only attempted one three-pointer this evening, I think. Yeah, not really his game, but his athleticism has really been a game-changer tonight. And Donovan Smith, meanwhile, hits another jumper, so that's a good sign for the Solano men. Yeah, trying to get Donovan Smith going here on the offensive end. Down 14, you know, with plenty of time left. You don't have to get it all in one possession. Take your time, play great defense on one end, and get easy buckets on the other end. So Dawson Johnson with a huge three from the corner. Gets the lead back up to 17. Big bucket there by Johnson to stop the bleeding for the Comets. So Donovan Smith with a three in and out. That looked pretty good, but not able to hit that one. A lob pass to Taji Johnson. Out to Russell. Russell saves it. Gets it back out to McKenzie. I believe that's the fourth in and out for Smith tonight. I yeah. mean, yeah. some he's halfway some, down and they just pop out. He just and, had some bad breaks. And I believe he's only, he has only hit two three-pointers this evening. Yeah, two three-pointers. Which are his only buckets. No, he's hit a couple of jumpers and a layup here and yeah, there. Layup, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he has 12. So Sewell with the drive and Sewell draws another foul. That's pretty much his game off the bench. Yeah. And I think that's very important in a, in a, not a close game, if you want to make it a close game with a lot of time left and to chip away by making free throws with no time running off. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's a good situation for the Falcon men. Haven't uh, got a foul this half yet, three for the Comet. So once you get points with the clock stop, you have to convert at the free throw line, but you can also buy you some time and get yourself back in the game with some easy points and with 642 spent in this first in the second half Solano I think a good sign is that they have no team fouls that means you can be a little bit more aggressive on defense and cause turnovers to yeah. make easier buckets for yourself yeah yeah so once they start showing the aggression then they will definitely start seeing the results on the defensive side I mean if you got six fouls to play around with why why not be a little aggressive when you're down 15 yeah so that's what my coach used to always tell us Use all your fouls if you have to. <laughs> Same with timeouts. They don't, they don't look, they're no use to you, like, yeah. if you don't use them. So, Seacrease able to hit that for Contra Costa. So, the Contra Costa offense matching Solano's in the second half. Smith for three. Off, back, bounces. And Andre Usher with the rebound and stolen away. Uh, Pekalo McKenzie. Ends up with the ball. Get off as a read down there by Usher. Just wasn't able to corral the ball. Had a lot of common hands around him, and they stripped him. Yeah, one thing about Usher is that he tends when he rebounds to bring his hands low, and Ooh. that gets the ball stripped away pretty easily. So James Johnson with the miss and rebounded by Usher. So Tim Moore trying to create some offense on the fast break. Brinston corner three. That is good. Nice corner three there by Brinston. Was able to set his feet. Shooting rhythm and cut the lead to 14 with a little bit over 12 minutes to go here in the second half. Nice Good. fast break possession. I like how you gave it to a three-point shooter mm -hmm. because they are great at knocking down threes and that's what they need, fast break points. Meanwhile, Johnson misses a three and Tim Moore's calling for a deep, but Dawson Johnson tips it away. Sewell back. Oh my God. And <laughs> that was interesting yeah. to say the least. Uh, so he get the assist and the bucket? Uh, 
Uh, Offers a, re- a rebound and a, rebound. And a bucket. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the trifecta. Yeah. Would that be on Sports Center top plays or not? I would top say not top ten. I was about to say this Friday, Sports Center does some not top tens. <laughs> yeah. That was an interesting lob, <laughs> to say the least. So Tim Moore drives and draws a foul. And right here, you would like to see the Falcon man, you know, get some easy buckets on the offensive end, but get a couple stops on the defensive end. You're not in a position to trade buckets right now. If you start trading buckets in the last three or four minutes and you're still down double digits, then it's just that much harder to get back in the game Come going down the stretch. Yeah, and really that's all Contra Cross has been doing this last five minutes, just trading buckets back and forth. So Tim Moore at the line. Rattles out the first one. Can't afford to leave points at the line at this point in the game. Yeah, I think that's the first one they missed this half. But, you know, you still got to feel optimistic about being able to get back in this game with the clock stop and some uh, freebies at the line. So Moore with the second free throw, and it's good. So Jesse Carey going to check in for Tim Moore. And Carey, he's been a little quiet tonight on the offensive end. He's been rebounding defensively. But let's see if he can get himself going. He's a stretch player, too. Can make some big buckets from the perimeter. So the zone look, and it is a long three-point yeah. shot from Danzel Walker, but Contra Costa gets the rebound and gets the put back in. So Justin Johnson with the put back. So all three Johnsons playing dividends. Andrew Brinson with a pull-up jumper. So Brinson with five. So the bench really playing pretty well for Solano. Ten points from Brinson and Sewell. Yeah, to match his number, coming off the bench with a nice rhythm jumper there from 15 feet. So Usher with the rebound, and that's what he's in there for, his size. And that's a good, strong rebound you like to see from your center. Yes, yeah. definitely. Yeah, centers need always need to be strong in the paint because if your center is soft, then you won't get anywhere. Brinson draws a foul from Byron Buckley. So Brinson and Sewell in there doing a lot of good things for Coach Nagel and Solano. Yeah, and you know, the lead is at 15. It was at 18 at the half. So, you know, they cut cut it down to uh, from 18 to 15, three points. But you would like to see if you could get three points every two minutes to try to get it down to single digits going into the second half of this second half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If, if this was four quarters, it'd be the fourth quarter. Yeah. So only two halves in called in community college basketball. And a foul away from the ball. Let's see who it's on. It's going to be on number 20, Danzel Walker. Solano needs to space out the floor more. And once they space out the floor more, if they get the ball, the correct ball movement, you will see a lot of results on offense. Yeah. And now Solano with this all bench lineup. And to Tim Moore, who nails the layup. So good, strong layup by Tim Moore. Great yeah, move, Tim Moore. Good finish there on the right block. Was able to finish in traffic. So this is an all-bench look from both sides with Byron Buckley and Pekela McKenzie alongside Tajay Brown, Danzel Walker, and Trenton Smith. So Buckley with a pull-up jumper, no good. Rebound by Snell. And that's the Falcons man's second consecutive stop on defense. So let's see if they can convert here and get it down to even 11. I think Solano really needs to make them pay for taking out all their starters and playing the back end of their bench at this point with still just under 10 minutes left. They can cut this lead pretty yes, easily. Yes, they are down 13 points. They are improving very much on defense. I hope they can keep this up and get the victory tonight. Yeah, and you made a great point, Brian, about them taking advantage of the second string being on the floor. You know when Tazi Johnson get back in, he's going to be a, a, a handful. So you want to take advantage of him being on the bench right now. So foul, though, on that dunk or layup attempt from Trenton Smith. Foul number 50, Andre Usher. I think Coach Nagel wants to capitalize because Donovan Smith is about to check back into the game. Yeah, I think that was a good foul there by Usher. I mean, you got to understand, don't let him get the ball on the glass, where he did, which he didn't, and uh, allow him to make two from the free throw line. So he makes the first free throw, something Contra Costa failed to do on multiple occasions in the first half. So. Yeah, this league could be a lot bigger had they converted on most of their first half free throws. Probably still a 20-point lead if they hit all their free throws, but let's see if the second one is in, and it is. Nice so, form there. Trenton Smith, the big man. 
Donovan Smith, did it dribble off his knee? Yes, it did, so it's going to be a turnover. It looked like Usher kind of rushed that. Uh, Tim yeah. Moore was open on the backside of that inbounds play. Yes. Yeah, want to get to his point guard too much. Yes, you can't panic in these type of situations. McKenzie for three in the corner, and it rattles just out of – and Usher with the big boy rebound. Pass out to Tim Moore, who's on the one-on-three fast break, gets to the right side and cannot make it. But nice penetration there by Moore. Was able to take it all the way down, get to the teeth of the defense, and get it off the glass for opportunity for two free throws. Tim Moore have a pretty good second half as well. So the bench for Solano with Andrew Brinston. Jean Sewell and Tim Moore playing pretty well. Yeah, playing a lot better this half. They already have 22 points compared to the 13 that they scored in the first half. So they're playing with a sense of urgency, down 15 with a little bit less than 10 minutes ago. Let's see if they can convert these free throws and get a little bit closer. Yeah, so right now let's do a little station identification. You're watching the Solano College Sports Network, either on Think TV, Channel 28, if you're watching at Fairfield. If you're watching us on YouTube.com slash Solano College, go check out Think TV and vice versa. You're on Channel 28, type in YouTube.com slash Solano College and check out all of our wonderful sports broadcasts. Brian Nelson here with Kareem Wall, Anthony Williams. In a 15-point ball game with Contra Costa leading, playing very ferocious defense from start to finish so far. And yeah, and you know, in that first game, Contra Costa was able to win by 16. I, I like that the Falcon men only had eight turnovers in that game. This game, they probably have doubled that, and it's allowing the uh, common man to extend their lead to 15. But I think they have to show a little more aggression. I'm speaking of the Falcon men on defense, try to trap a little bit more, play a little bit more zone, and get the ball to turn over a little bit. So let's see if Solano, who's been slowly chipping away, but the Comets are doing a nice job of not letting that response stop their momentum. I think as an offense and uh, as a team, you see a, a team go on a run, you got to respond to that to make sure they stop that momentum. Yeah. So at the free throw line will be Tim Moore, who was just unable to make a layup to make this a three-point attempt. So he'll get two at the line. And they've drawn seven fouls, so every foul from now on, they'll at least get a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, with plenty of time left, so that's what you want to do. Stay off the perimeter, you know, be more aggressive going to the hole, and you have to take advantage of your free throws. You know, you want to knock down many of them. I believe they only missed one this half, so yeah. they're doing pretty good. Yes, and these free, free throws will definitely add up, as they always do in basketball games, but people never notice, but they definitely do add up. That's one thing Salon does pretty well, and get to line with Sewell, Cox, and Moore, but Moore only able to hit one or two. So McKenzie, dribbling the ball, still going with the bench look. And Salon gives up. Oh. Thought that was a clean block from Usher, but he got a little too much hand. I so think that was a questionable call, <laughs> Brian. I don't know about that one. Danzel Walker goes to the line. Yeah, I think he got him with the follow through. He did get the ball first. I think the ref called after the contact, after the ball was already blocked. So, you know, 50 50 could have won either way. Now, why do you think they call fouls after you shoot it when it's such a ticky tack little thing? I mean, the ball is off of your hand. You're not affecting the shot in any way, and you hit the player's arm, and that's a foul. That's something that I never quite understood. Um, I think it's more about safety, you know. You know, I, I, you know like, I understand that for, like, hard fouls, if you, like, collide into the guy, but if you yeah. just, like, tap his arm. Well, yeah. some refs are different, you know. <laughs> if I was a ref, I, I wouldn't call it, but some, you know. Some are different than others. They, they lay down the law. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you you guys know of the great Reggie Miller. Mm -hmm. You know, he's yeah. get a lot of, you know, those and ones or, you know, the after the, the ball is gone. So sometimes you have savvy players know how to get to contact, mm -hmm. you know, keep their legs, arms up. Other times you just have refs bailing out guys, you know. So we just have to see if uh, they can continue to get action going towards the ball. And as you alluded to earlier, every foul now will put them – at the free throw line, two more would be in the double bonus. So this is where you take advantage of the deficit to get back into this game down 14 with a little bit less than nine minutes to go. So two more for the bonus, but Tim Moore at the line, hitting the first of the one and one. And yeah, yes, and I would like to add on to what you said, Kareem. Reggie Miller was great at kicking out that leg mm -hmm. yeah. to get the contact in. He was shoot a lot of a lot of three point um, 
three-point shot, so, you know, that's three free free throws for you, and those points added up to his total amount of points. Yeah. So now Contra Costa making a wholesale change, putting their entire starting lineup back in this game, so Solano not able to take advantage of that five bench player look, and now their whole starting unit has had five minutes of rest. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see if Solano can keep up defensively with Taji Johnson out to Dawson Johnson. And I believe this was the unit that the Commons had out in their first half that was able to get a lot of action going to the basket as well as turnovers. There's James Johnson, but it's poked away by Donovan Smith. Snell brings the ball out, passes to Smith. Smith drives to his right, plays it up, and foul on number 32, Lowell Hall. Yeah, great, great, great drive there by Smith. You know, he know his long-range game hasn't been going for him tonight, so he's not giving up. He's showing the versatility of a point guard, getting able to, being able to get to the hole and stop that clock to get two easy, easy free throws. Yes, I agree with Kareem. He needs to get to the ball, get to the hole more because his three-point shot isn't falling at the moment. And with that foul on the shot attempt, every foul from now on gets Solano two free throws, so guaranteed two instead of a one and one Or if you don't make the first, you don't get a second. And don't look now, fellas, but this free throw right here will bring him in to within 12, being down 18. So, you know, as I alluded to earlier, you want to chip away and try to make it the uh, broadcast jinx there. He yeah, just missed the free say, throw. Yeah, missed the free <laughs> throw. It's a little analysis oh. before the uh, actual result, but there is a turnover from Justin Johnson. Yeah, travel, travel there by Johnson. So, you know, the Falcon men, I know they go a little bit winded. We got Orchard Stock coming back in. He hasn't really been a threat on the perimeter as he's been in past games, mm -hmm. but let's see if he can get himself going. So lineup is Brinston, Snell, and Smith with Tim Moore and Osterstock at the big four positions. So Brinston being guarded by Newkirk. Snell now on a switch. Newkirk hassling him. Travels and good switch there from the Contra Costa defense. Yeah, a little out of control there by Snell. Wasn't dribbling with his head up. Kind of lost his foot in there and took too many steps. So now Jabril Newkirk handling the ball. Philip Seacrease checking into the game for Justin Johnson. So only two of the Johnsons out there. Dawson now has the ball. Out to Newkirk. Into Lowell Hall, into Johnson in the post. Back to, yep, back to Hall. So Lowell Hall with an easy bucket inside. A lot of traffic there down there in that block area. You would like to see their refs. Take a look at some three seconds, though, because I think they're kind of camping in that <laughs> middle there. Yes, I, I've noticed that too, Kareem. But they are playing very aggressive right now, and I have to give them that. So now Donovan Smith passing to Tim Moore. Osterstock in the post trying to get position. He wants the ball. Tim Moore pulls up for three instead and is short. Rebound by Lowell Hall. Mm, that was their first three-point attempt in a long time. Uh, I, as you can see, they're getting to the – getting to the hole a lot more so at least they're not shooting up a whole bunch of three so i could i could accept that yeah on that prior possession more i think he should have fed or stock right there on the block could have gave a, a got a give and go and got an easier shot than with the one that he took or even also start doing some work on the block there to get a high percentage layup so that solano possession not able to capitalize on that offensive possession corey cox now back into the game with jt robinson so as deep as an offensive lineup that Solano can have with Princeton, Smith, JT Robinson, and Corey Cox out on the, on the court. Dawson Johnson gets his own rebound and is able to throw it off of Osterstock. Interesting, it bounced off of him while he's standing out of bounds. While he's standing out of bounds, exactly. You would think it would have been off him. But that's the hustle that the common men are showing. He was able to get the offensive rebound, and we just seen a couple of Fal Falcon men standing around. Yeah, and Coach Nagel talking to the refs about that exact play. Because it, it looked like after Dawson Johnson threw it off of Osterstock's leg, it bounced off of him out yeah, of bounds. Yeah, it nicked him exactly out of bounds. As far as the out-of-bounds play, uh, it, it most likely hit the – Hit the out of bounds line before it, before it bounced up. So, yeah, I'm guessing that's what happened. Yeah, that's the far end of the court away from our view. So, we don't have eagle eyes. So, <laughs> we'll, we'll trust the refs there. I wish. <laughs> so, now, 
Taji Johnson. And you want to keep the ball out of Taji Johnson's hand. I mean, you know, he was the aggressor in the first half here. He's driving to the hole and picks up another foul. But you spoke about this earlier, Brian, about the Falcon men not being in foul trouble. That's only their fifth foul of this half. So you have to, you know, take some chances, you know, dive in the passing lane, see if you can get some uh, easy opportunities off turnovers to get back in this game. So Johnson at the corner three position. Fakes going up over Dawson Johnson, over to Seacrease. Seacrease back to Newkirk. Jabril Newkirk drives to his right. Passes out to Dawson Johnson. P fakes the pass and draws the foul on JT Robinson for two free throws. Yeah, Dawson Johnson looks like he has a pretty good pump fake game. Yeah, Dawson Johnson, uh, he's been, he used that move a few times earlier before the pump fake to the left or right to give him some uh, room to clear for a shot. Now he's going to the line to see if he can add two to his totals. Boy, you just like jinxing everybody because he missed that first yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe I should keep talking uh, and right. stop talking when uh, the Falcons on the line. So what do you think? Dawson Johnson makes this one? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he didn't. <laughs> so Donovan Smith inbounds the ball. Seems like the common men are picking up full, full court here. So now Sewell able to tip it to Corey Cox. Gets it out to Donovan Smith. Very dangerous pass, but lucky for Solano. Smith gets it back. Smith drives past Johnson, floats it up and in. And I think that play has been there all night for John, uh, Smith. Excuse me. He could have been going to the hole a little bit earlier in that first half, but he's taking it upon himself to get to the teeth of the defense and get some easy conversions. It's like Smith has about 15 points in this game. Seacrease. Out to Dawson Johnson for three. Dawson Johnson only one for four from three. And no foul called on Taji Johnson. Nice rebound there by Smith. So bodied up by Philip Seacrease. So Corey Cox will go to the line. Yeah. And Corey Cox has been quiet tonight. Let's see if these two free throws here get him going. Corey Cox is a 78% free throw shooter. Goes to the line about six times a game, so a very aggressive offensive player. Mm, that's very good from the free throw line. So Maybe he, he'll be in the 80 percentile after this. He hit the first one. And you would like to see if he do convert this second free throw. The Falcon defense pick up full court and see if they can get a turnover, an easy turnover here to get back into this game with a high percentage field goal. Corey Cox hits the second free throw. So um, I believe it was a lane violation, Brian. Uh, it is a delay from the uh, scorekeeper. Oh, okay. So just got to be patient, young Padawan, <laughs> you know. Just got to. Well, you know, I just, I just want them to be fair, you know, yeah. give us our points. <laughs> so 54-42. Now the ball is kicked out to McKenzie. McKenzie out to Newkirk, guarded by Corey Cox in the corner. Yeah, that's and a, a travel. travel. So. I'll fit to say, I, th I thought this was a big possession in the game. You don't want them to go back up 14. Now you have a chance to cut it to 10 or knock a three down to get it to single digits. Yes, that was a good closeout by Swell, Lejean Le Swell, Sewell. Uh, great closeout to cause the travel. So we'll see if Solano can capitalize on that mental mistake. Don Vince Smith for a long three. Oh, and Johnson unable to save that out of bounds. Runs into the Solano bench, takes out a, a coach or two. Yeah, the ball took a precarious bounce, kind of came off the rim a little bit sideways, and Johnson wasn't able to gather it. So Taji Johnson not able to save that ball going out of bounds. So lucky break for Solano. Timeout on the court. So 12 point game, four minutes, 27 seconds. Solano able to cut that 18 point halftime deficit down to 12, but guys, time's running out. Yeah, time is definitely running out. I mean, you know, the Contra Costa comments have scored uh, 22 this half, you know, compared to the 29 that Solano has scored. So they have outscored them by six, but you're gonna have to get some easy buckets to get back into this game. You don't wanna let them take over and run a four-court, half-court system on you and let the time peck away. Now, they only had one more foul 
since they've been in the bonus. So let's see if they can get some uh, aggression going to the bucket, stop the clock, and get some easy free throws going. And yes. They need to penetrate to the bu to the hole more and get some fouls and get to the line more, and they could easily come back and win this. And I think Coach Nagel's thinking along the same lines because he has his four most aggressive perimeter players on the court with Osterstock who makes a nice hook shot but it's strong. Yeah, nice move there by Osterstock. Just was able to get it go, to go down. So, Pakela McKenzie gives it to Jabrell Newkirk. Back to McKenzie. Cross court pass to Seacrease, Philip Seacrease. And just what I spoke about earlier, the comments are not in a rush to really convert. They would like to work some of that clock. The yeah. clock is their friend. It's the Falcons' ally right now. Excuse me. Ten seconds Enemy. left in the shot clock. McKenzie jacks up a three-point shot off the rim, and it is Solano ball. But, yeah, Solano's lineup, as I was about to say before, the shot from Osterstock went up. Lejean Sewell, Donovan Smith, JT Robinson, and Corey Cox, probably the four most aggressive perimeter guys that they yeah. have. So that double bonus is going to be very important for Solano to stop the clock, try and get two more points added on. And Smith has success going to the hole earlier in this game. Let's see if he can find his way back to the teeth of the defense. So Osterstock over to Corey Cox. Cox splits the defenders, draws a foul. Yeah, put, put the pressure on the refs. Make them call the foul when you're aggressive like that. If you don't get the layup, at least you get the foul, and the clock will be stopped to get to the free throw line. So 3.31 left in the game. Corey Cox, one of the better free throw shooters on the team at the line. Hits the first. Now Andre, Andre Usher gonna check in for Ostersock. Get a little bit more size and defensive rebounding yeah. for the defensive end. So good offensive defensive switch from Coach Nagel. Definitely, and you would like to see if they would pick up full court here. As Cox hits the second free throw. So 10 point ball game. The clock hasn't started though. Nobody's saying anything about it. So uh, <laughs> a little tricky home court advantage, huh? Yeah. Uh, so Newkirk over to number 24, James Johnson, and he travels. So huge possession switch. Only 10 seconds went off the clock when probably should have been 15. Yeah. I, I feel a comeback coming, guys. <laughs> so that feeling in the pit of your stomach is Donovan Smith. Oh. Kicks it out to JT Robinson, who's going to drive the basket and draw a foul. Never been so happy to draw a foul. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what you want to do. You know, nice pump fake there on the perimeter. You know, had the defender flying at him at the three, and he goes to the hole. Got the clock stopped with a chance to cut this lead, excuse me, this deficit down to eight. So JT only a 68% free throw shooter. So these two free throws, very important. Like I was saying earlier, the comments defense is, uh, is based on anticipation. As you can see, he anticipated that he was going to shoot the three, and when he pump fake, he had a wide open lane to the hole. And that's what they need to do. Uh, more ball fix and get to the hole, you know. Use the Contra Costa athleticism against them because they sent to jump at the ball. Very aggressive moves on the defensive end. So JT Robinson hits two, two free throws. So it's an eight point game with 313 left. A three possession game here. They're very much still in this game. If they could get a couple stops here, this, the momentum is definitely on the Falcons' side yeah, right now. You can feel the stands rumbling a little bit more, trying to get this team back into this game. James Johnson in the post, so mismatch on Donovan Smith. Donovan Smith blocks it, but he fouls it. Oh, another one, another one. I think it was blown, Brian. Yeah, that was a good play by Smith there. He was fronting the guy, and they threw it over the top. He was able to recover and meet him at the highest point, but he got bailed out by the ref. Smith blocked a guy about four or five inches taller than him, but uh, got a little bit too much of the elbow or body. And they underestimate Smith's size. I mean, he's under he's a small point guard, but he has hops like a small forward mm -hmm. or number two. So, you know, good defense there by Smith. Rarely see a point guard with pretty good post defense, but that play looked pretty good. Justin yeah. Johnson. Sophomore, cannot hit the second, but gets his own rebound. So he, a little out of control, almost slipped, went out of bounds. Donovan Go Smith on. saves it. Oh, but over to Contra Costa. So Contra Costa setting, gonna run some more clock. Cross court pass to Dawson Johnson, and he wants to settle things down. 
get a screen from Trenton Smith. Pulls up, jumpers off. Corey Cox with a huge rebound. Nine point ball game, 2.30 left. And JT get, Robinson has a ball. And you'd like to see a sense of urgency here by the Falcon man. Let's try to get a shot up within 10 seconds of the shot clock. So 23 and counting left. Sewell trying to find something. Corey Cox take a lot of time on this offensive possession. Donovan Smith back to Corey Cox. He's going to drive the basket. Going to get a foul called. Smart play by Corey Cox. It's nice to see the crowd finally get in, into the game. And you can feel the momentum swinging to the Falcon side now. Yeah, and it was a good move by Cox there. Him and Smith contemplated taking long-range threes, but, you know, when you can get to the hole, get the clock stop, I think two with the clock stop is better than uh, attempted three, whether you miss it or make it. Right, and it's going to be time is their biggest enemy right now, 2.08. That possession took a lot of time off the clock for it to develop. Corey Cox not able to hit that first free throw as well, so some things going against Solano at this point, even though they seem to be gaining momentum. Yeah, I think that's at least four free throws that has been missed this half. And you uh, make all your free throws, you're probably not too far away from, the, from this lead. But still in this game, a little bit over two minutes, three possession game. Cox hits the second, though. And do we want to blame the rim? Because uh, Contra Costa couldn't hit at this rim either. <laughs> yeah, it could be this, this end of the uh, court that's giving these teams issues. Our, our booming voice and our presence are just like looming over them at the free yeah. throw line. They just feel like, oh, I'm on TV. More, di more distractions than the, uh, the balloons that be behind the backboard, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those uh, big knockers. You know? Yeah. You know, I, it's a timeout. I can tell a personal story. I was at a restaurant once, mm -hmm. and a Spurs fan during the NBA Finals had those big boomers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every every single basket. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, I'm like, I'm eating a burger here. Yeah. Like, Come on, baby. Just put those things away. Yeah. You're in a public place. I was going to say, I mean, you'd be surprised how annoying it is when it's right next to you. you yeah. Know? <laughs> you don't realize how loud it is. And yeah. It really credits to, like, NBA players and college players who can focus through that distraction. And concentrate, yeah. So let's see if Solano can gain some concentration here with just under two minutes left, a minute 59, and an eight-point ball game. And really, is Solano against the clock? Yeah, but, you know, Solano have outscored the uh, comments by 10 this half. You know, if they had a couple more minutes, maybe it would be, you know, a shot for them to get back in this game. But with two minutes left, you have to show a sense of urgency, you know, pick up on defense, probably full court, and try to get to the line with that clock stopped again or, you know, work your – offense for an easy perimeter shot really no nothing other than perfect basketball can get them a win at this point so this defensive possession equally as important as every possession left in this ball game yeah so for the comments we have dawson johnson number five jabrell newkirk trent smith manning the middle with philip seacrease and tashi johnson who's having a quiet second half yeah and same five for solano as before the timeout Sewell, Smith, Cox, Robinson. And they're picking up sure. full court now, trapping. Trying to get that turnover, but Contra Costa doing a great job. Taji Johnson gets a layup out of the deal. Yeah, great offensive execution by the common man. He was able to break that press and find Johnson on the left block for an easy two. And so now Donovan Smith's going to D up, uh, by, uh, being defended by Taji Johnson. I think that's a good coaching move by Contra Costa, putting the aggressive Johnson on Smith. Yeah. Great foul, Corey. Great foul. Yeah. You have a one and one. Taji Johnson, let's see, he is a 72% free throw shooter, but if he misses and you get the rebound, that's another possession without wasting so much clock. Yeah. So not a bad, bad foul there. You know, you would like to see Donovan Smith get a better shot there on the other end, but you still have time, a minute and a half left, down 10. Hopefully, Johnson won't make this. But he does. <laughs> Again, broadcast is cursed. <laughs> I think it, the it happens the, the exact opposite thing. The What's curse it? is over, Kareem. I think <laughs> so. <laughs> so Taji Johnson having not the best second half, but this last two possessions, big for Contra Costa, hitting that layup and those two free throws. So the lead is now 12 with a minute 27. JT Robinson surveying the court. Taji Johnson all over him. New Newkirk, Sewell, wide open for three. Pumps, drives the basket, layup, and the foul. So great play there by Lejean Sewell. Great move by Sewell. Nice pump fake here on the perimeter. Got to the cup, was able to get the and one. Let's see if he can convert for a three-point play. So Andre Usher going to check back in for defense. 
So 49-59, minute 15 left. Yeah, and as you talked about earlier, Brian, you know, uh, Tahaji Johnson had a s slow second half here, but he did make some key plays down the stretch, was able to get that layup when they broke their press, and it was also to convert on two free throws. So, you know, he's going to be the tone setter for the common man tonight. He didn't have an explosive game as he did in that first going around, uh, putting up 25 and 10 rebounds, but he has been the tone setter for his common teammates. Yes, and that's what basketball is all about, who can make the most key plays. And whoever makes the most key plays will definitely win the ball game. And the comments, they have definitely made some key plays, and Salama has made some great key plays in the second half. So this ball game is still up in the air. Um, the comments have them by 10 points, but Salama definitely can still win this game. I hope they don't give up. After a very lopsided first half, Contra Costa looks like they were all over Solano. Yeah. But Solano, give credit to them for a second half adjustment and getting back into this ball game. Yeah, definitely. They got back into the ball game. Uh, you know, you, you would have hoped that in that first half they could have cut that lead down to single digits or, you know, a little closer to 10 than 20. But, you know, that's the difference right now. I mean, they're outscoring the common man by eight this half. You know, who knows if they keep the game a little closer in the first half. Maybe we're talking about two possessions here. But with a three-possession game, a minute 15 to go, it's going to be a tall order for the Solano man to come out victorious in this one. So Sewell will be shooting one free throw once the Commons get back on the court. Taji Johnson. Yeah, Sewell is definitely, um, he's okay from the free throw line, shooting 60%. Um, these are two big free throws. I hope he can knock them down. Actually, it's an and one, so let's see if he can convert the three-point play here. Okay. Yeah, he made the layup there, and he's going to shoot the free throw. It's going to be short, and it's going to be rebounded by Trenton Smith. Taji Johnson going to be fouled by Donovan Smith, trying to draw a three-point shooting foul. Nice little trick there, but I don't think the rest of the rest are gonna buy. No, the rest aren't gonna buy it. They're just showing the number three for Donovan Smith. Yeah. And now, I mean, this is really Solano's only option to play the foul game. Mm -hmm. You know, a little bit over a minute left. You're gonna hope to uh, play the two-one game. You know, hope that they miss one or two free throws. As he makes the first. And on the other end, you have to convert on your offensive. Uh, plays and execute no margin for error now for the Solano man and Taji Johnson hits two more huge free throws for Contra Costa Cox with a pull-up jumper short and Donovan Smith with the rebound and he puts back up and in nice offensive rebound by Smith there Trying to get a turnover here as they get it to the center and he is going to go to the hole draw the foul and lay it up and in great play by Trenton Smith yeah, Trent Smith haven't really been active all game. He had a couple free throws earlier, but he has he has a nice form there. Was able to stay composed and under control and kiss it off the window and has a possibility for a three point play. Yes, and he has definitely made some key plays in this game. He has been big on the boards, and as you can see, he's contributing to the team, and they have the lead. Yeah, and that's a theme from Contra Costa up and down the roster. You, you've seen a lot of different guys get as Taji Johnson. They get him for a violation. lane violation there. I, I don't think the ball had left, but nope. the athleticism of Taji Johnson was trying to get to the cup and uh, do a spectacular yeah. <laughs> putback move. There's Oster stop for three in the corner, and it is off back rim, and it's rebounded by Contra Costa. It's going to be a foul. You know, I love to see some the most athletic people in the world they impress you with when they do the most random things yeah we did a there was a the, during the solano showdown chabot's women's team uh -huh. they have this d1 point guard who went to d1 went back to community college yeah. taylor green most impressive thing i've seen she dove for a ball jumped over her bench wow clear the chairs yeah and those are just the type of athletes you see sometimes in community college that are just so impressive. Yeah, I mean, you hit the nail on the head because sometimes when you're in the moment, your adrenaline's flowing, it's just amazing what, you know, athleticism that, you know, these players have and, you know, how they get after it. So you love to see plays like that. Yes, and while we're talking about very athletic people, to me, I think the most athletic basketball player would have to be a tie between Russell Westbrook and Gerald Green. Gerald Green, interesting pick. He is very athletic as Osterstock misses the corner three. Cox battling for the rebound, but 
is still available. And there is Trenton Smith trying to dug it. And he gets it. Hammers it home. And I think that will be the final nail for Solano. Smith, Mr. Dreadhead with the finish <laughs> at the cup. <laughs> well, so is the skinny Dreadheads with the must bounce. <laughs> <laughs> So emphatic finish from Trenton Smith. With ease, too, man. I mean, you know, his, it looked like his elbow was above the rim, man. I'd like to see him in a community college slam dunk competition. Uh, I know Taji wanted that one. I know, I know Taji. I know he wanted that <laughs> he one. He wants every single possession he can, even though it's 22 seconds left. Shot clock is off, and time's running down, and things aren't looking good for Solano. 15 points is the deficit at this point, 66-51. Uh, Cox for three, and it is good, so a little window dressing, put it down to 12. Yeah, that was a nice step back by Corey for the three. Um, they they definitely need some more three-point shooting down 12 points. Yeah. Maybe and you know somebody can have a Reggie Miller-like performance tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Reggie can score 12 and. Well, 17. he, he scored Smith. 11 and 7 seconds, I believe. I, I think that was it. Trent Smith with another dunk. Blows by Osterstock, and that uh, yeah. sportsmanship uh, <laughs> off the window with that dunk. So <laughs> Corey Cox drives that to that bucket. Yep, and that's going to be the just about the ball game. Yeah, it looked like Osterstock gave up on that play, and yep. Smith was able to uh, fake one way, go baseline with authority. So that was very, very interesting. Thought you'd just dribble it out at that point with a 12-point lead, but guess he won another highlight. He saw yeah. the cameras, and that was a good dunk. <laughs> oh, Smith. Oh. oh! Unable to get the law pass <laughs> oh, the game, but that would have been <laughs> that top that play. That, that, would top that, that would have been beautiful. That would have been nice, man, if they could have got that down. Nice. Executed out of bounds play, just wasn't able to finish. So tough loss for Solano. Final score is going to be 68 54. Guys, what, do, what can you say about Solano coming back in the second half? Well, oh. go ahead, Anthony. Well, them coming back in the second half, they were down by 19, I believe, in the first half, and they came back and played a tremendous defense. Um, they kept a lot of people out the paint. They just couldn't get it done tonight, but I, I, I have to give them credit on the defensive side. Yeah, and I think Solano made a great effort to get back into this game in the second half. I mean, you know, what, what happened with them, they got down too far in the first half, but they was able to show a sense of urgency early in that second half. You know, cut the deficit to at least they got it to 10, but nothing less than that. So, you know, we had uh, early and often offense out of Taji Johnson, and he's able to come on later on that game to – to solidify the win for the comments. So Contra Costa behind the three Johnsons, Dawson Johnson, Taji Johnson, and Justin Johnson able to take this one over Solano despite a good second half effort. The final score here at SESN, Solano Falcons 54, the Contra Costa Comets 68. For Brian Nelson, Anthony Williams, and Kareem Wallen, we'd like to thank you for watching SESN.